The sixth grade is where my year of misery began. I started to get bullied by other classmates and the derogatory terms immediately came raining towards my direction. I was insulted and made fun of everywhere on campus, in the PE boys locker room, during class, passing period, lunch, on the school bus, and even after school. I never stood up for myself and only became a child filled up with bottled up emotions and would always arrive home crying to my mom. I remember when I would, when I would go knocking on my neighbor's door, asking if I can play with both of them. They were brothers. I would, uh, I would end up getting kicked out of their apartment and every time their parents were not home, they would advise their sons to kick me out if I ever went knocking on their door looking for them to play. I knew this because the boys would tell me what their parents thought about me just to make me feel bad on purpose. I hated the seventh grade. I really fucking hated it. That year was a living hell for me. I was in my mid-year of middle school. Hormones were kicking in badly. My attractions for other boys began to become stronger and my relationship with both of my divorced parents started to get very bad. I was so confused and full of self-hatred and bottled up emotions. I would ask myself that why would I get bullied? Why was I treated badly? The more I defended myself, the more the crowds and students bullied me and gained up on me. I became an aggressive, feisty, rude, hormonal, bitchy 12-year-old who just had enough of the bullshit that he had to put up through everywhere he went. I became a bad boy, always fighting with kids, getting referrals, etc. I was just tired of everything that was going on in my life and I was fed up. So I exploded and unleashed the beast inside of me, up to the point where I ended up getting expelled from William H. Stanley Middle School. I remember getting so mad at the school faculty because I got expelled. How did I end up getting expelled if only bad kids get expelled? I would ask myself. But I was also happy. At least I was no longer going to step foot in that school where my life was a living hell. At least I was going to start fresh at a new school and the healing process was finally going to start. I can surely say that out of all my three years in middle school, eighth grade was the best. Although it also had its dark side. I was still battling with my sexuality and when the eighth grade, be when the eighth grade year began in the fall of 2010, I promised myself that I was going to turn and I quote, straight. And that I was never going to get bullied as the gay kid. And that I was going to act more masculine and show no signs of homosexuality. And that I would have a girlfriend and fit in. And I did accomplish all that. But once in a while, kids would say that I was gay. I guess I couldn't hide it well enough. I ended up making new friends, had a few girlfriends, which in reality were not even <laughs> real relationships. Because I only lasted dating them for a few days. I then became popular and for the first time I experienced what school popularity felt like. I started New Dawn High School in the summer of 2011. Me and Sammy, my best friend at that time who later on came out as transgender, ended up being transferred with me at the same school. I guess she wasn't ready either and still had some work to do on her own. She came out as transgender the first semester of our freshman year. Later on, she truly had a powerful impact on me. Not only because she was my best friend, but because I thought to myself, if by her being trans, who has it harder than me being a gay male, if she is out and proud, then why can't I? I would ask myself. That is where I began to dominate and own who I was as the wonderful human being that I was and still am today. My first semester went well, made new friends, became popular, all until I had the big shifting moment in my life. It all started with the big paranoid anxiety attack I had in the final days of December 2011. I finally came to a conclusion that I was gay and I came out to my family. My mother did not react well to me coming out at all, but at the same time, she didn't really know how to react either. We had a conversation with her opening up to me. 
that when I was a toddler, due to my behavior, she would question herself if I was going to be a homosexual man by the time I was an adult because of the way I would act. It was hard for her to accept, and it still is to this day. She then persuaded me to go with her to speak to a Roman Catholic priest in town who apparently had the spiritual gift of performing exorcisms so that he could remove the gay demon out of me. I agreed and went with her because after I came out, I felt very guilty and actually believed that I was living in sin. Since my mother is deeply religious, she thought that she was doing the right thing. I was just so confused and I sadly went along. Once we got to the priest's office, he greeted us with kindness and we talked about my situation. He ended up diagnosing me with a few mental health diagnoses. Apparently, this man had a background in working in the mental health field. He also diagnosed me with the homosexual disorder besides major depression and anxiety as he believed homosexuality was more of a psychological disorder and referred me to a psychiatrist and therapist who were supposedly going to help me. When we got to the doctor's office, we realized that his practice had been permanently closed and out of business. That is where the first attempt of conversion therapy ended for me. I came to a self-conclusion and accepted myself for who I was. My journey began there. For those who don't know what conversion therapy is, conversion therapy is a now illegal practice which has been banned in the United States in which a person's sexual orientation or gender identity that is not cisgender or heterosexual is attempted to be changed to its, and I quote, normal state through psychiatric, psychotherapy, or religious services. Medical offices such as psychiatrists and therapists no longer are allowed to practice it, but many religious churches throughout America still do. In the Roman Catholic and Protestant Christian religions, it's called the, and I quote, pray the gay away, where a Catholic priest or a Christian pastor or evangelist try to pray and exercise the gay demon out of a person. Terrifying, I know. When I started school at San Diego City College, I immediately got sunk into college life and my life had just changed in such an amazing way. I loved City College so much and college in general. I still had my ups and downs while t attending City College and I still do to this day, but that is something that I am constantly working on. My, experiencing growing, my experience growing up was very difficult, but it has taught me so much. I have learned a lot throughout my young years and I know that I still have so much to learn. I have so many stories to tell if, and if I could tell my entire story in one sentence, this would be it. My message to young folks like myself is to never give up. Always stand up for yourself, seek help, and follow your dreams. Thank you.